Well, my, there's a story attached to the website. I used to have a, tr a typical website, you know, me grinning with, you know, a list of events and, you know, some recent press and just something very basic. When I was working on Goon Squad, uh, I, ha I knew that I was, at the very end, I inserted a chapter in PowerPoint. And I was very concerned that the publisher would, would refuse to publish it <laughs> because it was really unlike anything else in the book. And I, I felt that it, I knew it would, it would raise production issues. And of course, it is a digital form. And I had a feeling I would want to create it in color, even if they did publish it in black and white. So I knew there was going to be a web element to the book, possibly a chapter that would only be available online, or even if I did have it in the book itself, a different version of it online. So then I started thinking, how does this traditional website with my grinning face really work as a, as a, as a nest for this digital chapter? And it felt completely irreconcilable. It felt too standard, too generic to create a, a, a location for this crazy fiction. So I thought, I've got to throw all of that out and start over. I need a new website. So my husband is in the theater. He is a fantastic guy who designs all of his, um, you know, his his uh, brochures and and programs and and basically he's the design master of the of the theater company. So I went to him and I said, Noah. His name is Noah Scalen. Um, I have a I have a I have a I need a new website. Here's my book. Take a look and tell me what you come up with. And so Noah said, well, that's not really how I do business. I need you to answer some questions about what you want the website to do. So he sent me like a 10-page questionnaire with all kinds of very detailed questions. Pick five adjectives of what you want people to feel when they go to this website, you know, all this stuff. And I called him and I said, I, I think we've had a miscommunication. You're a designer. I'm not. I love your design. Make this website amazing. That's it. That's what I want to pay you to do. And he said, I don't know if we can actually work together because I can't do that for you. You need to have the insight of what you want this to be and I will embody that. I'll make it visual, but I can't have the idea. So I thought, I don't know. I, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do here. So I went for a run, which is what I sometimes do when I'm stuck. And while I was running, I had a kind of vision of how it could work. It didn't look any particular way because I'm not that visual but I had a sense of a kind of ghost version of Goon Squad, which follows this web of people through different times and places, but often New York at different moments of its history. I had a sense of creating kind of a ghost version of that book in the form of corollary points in my own life that, that created the context for some of those different iterations of New York. It was an unusual thing for me to do because I almost never write about myself. Um, either in fiction, like I don't use myself or people I know in my fiction. I also don't blog. I, I really am not into any of that. So this was kind of a leap for me, but it felt justified and even kind of necessary as an interesting way to create a website that had more texture to it and did something more interesting and created sort of an, a little bit of an adventure unto itself rather than just telegraphing, you know, here's who I am and here's where I'm going to be reading next week. And so when I told my idea to Noah, he said, okay, that's cool, I can work with that. And he, and he embodied it and made it visual. So the website is basically organized around the chapters of Goon Squad, and each one has a corollary time and place in my own life, which is often the time and place that I actually wrote the first draft of that particular chapter. I write by hand, so I often don't write at home. So for example, there was a particular chapter that I wrote sitting in Prospect Park while I was waiting for one of my kids to get out of Hebrew school. So I, I use that and I, you know, I, I know the years because I have all the first drafts with the dates. So the entry point to each chapter is the time and place in which I created it, which has a kind of nice echo with the fact that time and place is usually my way in to the fiction itself. And so if you, so once you click on that link, you find out the little story of how that story was created or at least when and where. Often I include a musical component because music is so important in the book and I listen to a lot of music while writing it. Um, and God, I, you know, I don't even remember exactly what else I've got on there. I've, you know, first sentences, um, uh, a, a funny anecdote, like there's one chapter that I read aloud in Maine, and it was an absolute disaster. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a, a, 
it's a chapter called 40 Minute Lunch in which a celebrity reporter basically tries to rape the celebrity that he's um, interviewing and it's actually supposed to be comic. Well, hopefully that works on the page, but I can tell you it does not work live. <laughs> Unfortunately, I realized this while well, reading it aloud with no plan B because it was still in manuscript to a very stony faced group in, um, in Maine, and it was absolutely my worst live performance experience by a long shot. Um, so I include, I throw in anecdotes like that, just anything about a particular chapter that, that feels interesting or fun.